Welcome, 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 everyone. I am your host, Jess, the founder of Black Travelers Network. I hope uh, things have been going well for you as we are in this season and this moment in time. Before we get into today's discussion, I'm going to adjust very quickly uh, the audio, um, the background audio, and I want to make it a point to kind of lay the foundation for uh, today's discussion. So before we get into it, I want to take some time to do a bit of house housekeeping. I don't want to date the broadcast, so if any of these trips, any of these destinations that I show and share on your screen, if any of those destinations appeal to you, definitely reach out. At the current moment, we are prioritizing travel to Brazil, Spain, South Africa, Kenya, and Vietnam. Uh, after today's broadcast, you know, South Africa and Kenya, you know, those will no longer be uh, top priority uh, destinations beyond uh, this year. Um, they will fall into the category of what I call uh, destinations that are more uh, that are best and and better made available to our uh, private uh, group of travelers. Those of you who wish to go with your own group, we have some amazing people we work with on the African continent, which makes this broadcast quite a challenging broadcast uh, to do because of the fact that we... Um, you know, we, we have such deep relationships that have existed uh, for many years in different parts of the world, but especially on the African continent. So definitely email us at blacktravelersnetwork at gmail.com. That's blacktravelersnetwork at gmail.com. If any one of these destinations jumps out at you and you like to get more details on how you can be a part of the next experience uh, that we have to any one of these spaces and places. So to move us forward <laughs> and uh, to make sure that we are uh, on topic, I want to help frame today's broadcast uh, and uh, I want to ground the discussion and put it into context by saying this broadcast is not designed to discourage you from traveling to the African continent. I have to make that very clear because in times past when I've given very honest, uh, factual, <laughs> uh, you know, anecdotal uh, stories of what has happened uh, to us as we travel to the African continent, it tends to get some people a little upset. Um, but the reality is, is that I have said it before many times before, and I'll say it again, this is not designed to discourage you. It is designed to make you a, a, aware, to inform you as to why we, at this moment in time, why we are actually uh, deprioritizing uh, our, our community's travel to the African continent. There's really so much to say about this topic and I have to admit that I have been putting it off because this is a difficult conversation to have, but it absolutely needs to be had and this is the conversation that I didn't want to have ladies and gentlemen but you know what it's time it is time and I'm not going to go too deeply on Ghana I'm going to do a special piece for Ghana because I just the the part about Ghana gets so deep and so touchy and I know Ghanaians hate hearing me talk about their country, but I've definitely been there a number of times and I'm not uh, being malicious if I, if I 
tell what I've experienced in Ghana. It's just been my experience. And based off of my experience, I am allowed to have an assessment. <laughs> okay. Um, but, you know, I want to be clear that as an American wanting to relocate specifically to Africa, you can forget about going there and finding a job. I think, you know, we have to just put that out there because it amazes me how many people still do not know that. Um, that's not really how the continent of Africa works. Most of the countries um, that you go to on the African continent is going to be very difficult for you to find a job like you could go job hunting or job searching here in America. Most black Americans who are in Africa who have relocated are either there because they have a business that they are running and those who have jobs, likely it's a job with an American company that allows them to live there and, and, and work or maybe one of the more well-developed European countries. You know, you cannot relocate to the African continent expecting to get a job. I think that's the first thing that our, our you know, Americans need to understand about traveling abroad, and in particular traveling to different countries in the, on the African continent. You have to think about it from this perspective. So many of the citizens of these countries need jobs themselves. And those jobs that do exist in their job market will typically go to their citizens. It's not like in America where people can come over here from anywhere in the world, get job training and get a job. That is not how the continent of Africa works. Unless you are dealing with a well-developed country like Canada, some of the European countries, Australia, or other well-developed countries, you are likely not going to find employment uh, in these places. And again, if you want to relocate, relocate to the African continent, you have to already have your money figured out. Be of a builder's mindset or have employment established that allows you to be there. So which of the African countries do I recommend? I wish I had a drum roll, uh, but I don't. I only have a beat. <laughs> so I play the beat. Which of the countries? Wow. That's a tough one, but a very easy one for me to say at this moment. Which of the African countries do I recommend you relocate to? None of them. None of them. Not one of them. That would be my advice. Here's the problem with what's happening in Africa right now and why we here are deprioritizing the African continent and I want to be very clear about this because, you know, people think you're throwing shade and being mean, but it's not even remotely close. If you follow Black Travelers Network, and if you have not subscribed, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, hit the subscribe button uh, and make it a point to like the video. Um, but if you look back on uh, some of our videos that we have done, you will know that last, I, I'll, again, I don't want to <laughs> date the broadcast, um, several months ago, I'll say that much, I did a, uh, I did a video uh, where I asked the question, should Western blacks punish Ghana? And this was in response to the poor treatment that black Americans and also uh, uh, blacks from the UK uh, experienced during the COVID, during COVID and, and going over to Ghana. And also just generally speaking, going to Ghana and being overcharged excessively. So that's what that video uh, sp speaks a little bit more to. Should Western blacks punish Ghana? And I 
in that video, I actually give uh, information that was taken right off the country's website. Um, but as a result of me doing that, I got a lot of comments that were not the most positive comments. And it was a lot of gaslighting going on, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of gaslighting going on. And so in response to that, I decided that I was going to just let the comments go as they should because I don't, you know, it takes a lot for me to um, actually take a comment down. I, I usually don't take comments down because I think the comment section is a great tool uh, to help other people learn. Uh, whether it's other people offering ideas and suggestions that maybe I'm unaware of or I didn't think about, I think it's a great source. But for, for a number of reasons, I let comment stands because I like for people to see how other people are reacting and responding. And the comments on these, video, on these videos were kind of, you know, some of them was a little, little mean-spirited, <laughs> you know? Um, and so I say that to say, if you re, if you go back to the video, if you have time, or if you want to just peruse the comments, it will share, you will, you will read how some of the African brothers and sisters, how, how they think and how they feel about us as black Americans. And it's really, really sad. I am going to play a clip for you. Now, if you're easily triggered, um, this is a clip you may, I, I recommend you listen to, but uh, just know that it can be a little triggering for some. I was online and I was listening to a, a broadcast and in this broadcast, there was a, a, a woman, a South African woman, and it made me so sad to hear her talk because South Africa is one of literally one of my favorite countries uh, to visit. It's part of the reason why uh, I uh, worked so hard to create uh, Black Travelers Network uh, because of my visit to South Africa. Beautiful, beautiful country. But I want you to take a listen to the mindset that exists, not just in South Africa, because I'm not going to put this just on South Africa. I want you to take a listen to the mindset that exists among uh, some of the African nations, uh, people from the African nations in general. So take a listen. these Americans that are coming to South Africa, right? So the ones that are settling in South Africa now, um, the Americans that are coming to South Africa and settling in South Africa, they are coming here, taking our jobs. Why don't they start businesses in America? Why are they coming here? We don't want them here. Why are they coming here? They should start businesses in America so they can work that side. They don't, they don't really have to come here. They don't, they don't. We don't want them here. Very rare that you'll find South Africans coming to America actually because we hardly relocate anyway. So mm -hmm. we just want to stay in South Africa. We don't want you guys coming here. Please tell your people, talk to your people to talk to their people. We don't want Americans coming here. See, why are the Americans bloody tethers? coming here they even have a flipping facebook group um encouraging each other to move to south africa we don't want you guys here man like for real my my smoke right now is for you guys i don't want you guys coming here once we're done with you then we'll deal with the white people when africans come that side best believe they're very educated more educated than you guys will ever be they're very smart that's why you guys are so mad at these people because we are so much smarter than you guys All so I hope you heard that. <laughs> I really hope you took that in, ladies and gentlemen, because it's very sad uh, to hear that kind of negativity coming from someone who, quite frankly, 
uh, the, the, the woman said that they'll, in other words, they're dealing with us black Americans. They're dealing with us now. Okay. Uh, and they'll get to dealing with the white people of which they won't, of which they won't, you know, white people have been in South Africa for centuries. They live very well, very, very well in South Africa. Do not believe all of this, uh, you know, rhetoric about how white people in South Africa are somehow struggling. They live very well in the country. Uh, many of their the communities that they built in the country are are beautiful. You will not find successful black areas in South Africa. I've been traveling there for years. It really does not exist. The closest example that they will give you in South Africa is Soweto. And Soweto is a township. Soweto is a township. It is no, nothing more, nothing less than a township. The name Soweto, it incorporates the term township in it. So um, just be mindful of, of that part. And, you know, that mindset, I wish, like I said, it'd be one thing if, if you're hearing this specifically from the country of South Africa, but you partner that coming out of South Africa with, you know, some of the comments that you'll see on, on the video that I, where I talk about Ghana, you know, that is very, um, very discouraging, you know, because when Americans go there, specifically black Americans go there, we're going there for vacation more often than not. We're going there in, in those who are going on business, they're going in collaboration with and working with many of the brothers and sisters on the continent. Uh, this isn't a situation where we're going over uh, taking, you know, the people who work with us, we've worked with them for many years, many years. Uh, and that's why it's hard for me to to come on and say and, and speak so candidly about deprioritizing travel to the African continent, because to be honest, like I said, we have. Uh, you know, a great group of brothers and sisters who, who we've worked with for many years, but we cannot ignore this kind of energy and mindset coming from the African continent. It, you can't ignore it. The last little bit I want to share with you uh, about this mindset and this energy that is happening on the African continent. This actually is something that uh, came from a magazine article called The Point. And uh, The Point is a newspaper, an independent newspaper uh, out of, out of uh, the African country of the Gambia. And what happened was uh, a couple, not too long ago, uh, this this was back in 2020. Uh, it talked about the well in this article. It is the article was titled "Diaspora Community in Gambia Reacts to the Land Minister's Comments." And basically, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through this really quickly uh, because a lot of people do not know about this. But the minister, the, the land minister in Gambia uh, warned back in uh, September of 2020, he warned Gambians against selling land to diasporan Africans. They, uh, the, the article alleges that landowners in the country have been advised against leasing or selling land to African Americans, Black British, and even Caribbeans living in the country. The land minister was alleged to have made these remarks while speaking uh, during 
uh, a, a president's tour. Uh, one of the presidents had a meet the people tour. And it said, the article says, the minister alleged that some of the diasporan Africans are, quote, land grabbers and added that they claim to be investors, but some of them are land grabbers. They want your land. Before you sign any document, make sure you conduct background checks on them, the minister allegedly stated. It was in that regard that the diaspora and community in the Gambia have strongly reacted to the allegations, describing it as discriminatory and disappointing and disrespectful to them and their ancestors who were kidnapped during slavery. This is what what the article is saying. Uh, it says for on uh, Adrian Ryan, vice president of uh, Council of African Descendants and co-founder of Blacksit. This type of news is terrible for Gambia and Gambians as it is unguarded statements could cause a huge amount of damage. And uh, this particular vice chair, uh, he issued a, a quote about it. Uh, and he said, we feel like outcasts rejected by our own people when conversely we see Arabs and other national and other nationals such as Lebanese, Indians, Chinese and white Europeans and white Americans and white British not getting any backlash or challenge. And they own huge areas of land in the Gambia, such as Makasudu and Bonto and Banjul. This may be construed by uh, diasporans and African descendant Gambian residents as discrimination and possibly even defamation because they're saying, oh, he didn't say that. Um, but it says our forebears were taken into captivity, uh, into slavery by force. Is this our welcome back home? No, automatic citizenship and now no home either. We welcome comment from the government to clarify the situation. So basically, and you can read uh, the article, the article still up, although the article was posted in other places. Uh, this article actually was taken down because in some of the places because, you know, it was just a little bit embarrassing for for the country that this kind of rhetoric actually got out <laughs> and of course the country has denied it but there were a number of people who said no it's actually true and um they they've heard it and so I, I i say all of that to say you know these are some very specific examples that i wanted to share uh with you know, with uh, the viewers of the broadcast and with our community, because in response to this, this, these sentiments, I think it's important for us to deprioritize our travel. You know, that's not to say that we'll never travel there or we're not going to travel. So as you could see on our travel list of places that we are set to travel, uh, you know, South Africa and Kenya are two very popular destinations. And we also talked about adding uh, Tanzania to the list as well. But what I don't want is I don't want people getting comfortable with Americans visiting the country and, you know, dropping off money in the country and being disrespected, whether it's the people, the black Americans who are living there and feeling disrespected and disregarded and not wanted. Like, why are we why are we spending tourism dollars there if the overall sentiment of the people is that they don't really want us there? Like on some level, 
I feel it's important to be respectful of that on some level. I do also feel that for those of you who have never visited the African continent and you have not visited, uh, uh, you know, certain countries that you have always wanted to visit, I still feel that you should visit these countries. Part of education is going and traveling and understanding your place in the world and understanding what the world looks like. This is not, again, I want to emphasize, I said it in the beginning, this is not designed to discourage you at all from traveling uh, and visiting in, in any of these countries. If anything, I think you should visit and make your own assessment. Okay. I really, really do. I'm just saying after we've been traveling for so many years to the African continent, uh, one of the things that discourages me is I really do not like this mindset. I don't like it. I also don't like being surrounded by people who think it takes a hundred years to solve a problem. This is the last uh, story I'm, I'm going to uh, leave you guys with. Um, because I'll never forget. This was a few years ago when I was in South Africa and I, I take Uber a lot. Um, I love Uber. Uh, especially in, in uh, foreign countries, because it allows you a chance to get to know the country and to get to know the people. And I remember talking to several, u several Uber drivers who just so happened to be from, uh, from Zimbabwe. You'll meet, meet a lot of brothers and sisters, uh, who have migrated from Zimbabwe into South Africa. And so, you know, we were talking about some of the political stuff and how it played out in Zimbabwe. And I asked one of the men in uh, Zimbabwe, one of my Uber drivers, I said, how long do you think it'll take for you guys to get your country back on, on par with where it, you need to be? So people aren't leaving Zimbabwe coming to South Africa so much. And his response was a hundred years. And I was like, a hundred years, that sounds ridiculous. You know what I mean? And so I asked another like two or three drivers the same question. Cause I'm just thinking maybe that's just an isolated incident. I kept getting this number a hundred years. It'll never happen in my lifetime. I even asked a South African, a South African told me the same thing, a <laughs> hundred years to solve the problems in Zimbabwe. And it was at that moment and that time that I decided that I most likely would not call any part of Africa home. Uh, it, anybody who knows me knows that at one particular point in time, I really truly desired to live six months in the United States and six months in South Africa. Um, because again, it's a beautiful country and I highly recommend everyone visit, right? But I don't like that energy. I don't like being surrounded by people who have a defeatist mindset. I don't enjoy the energy of people who think that it takes a hundred years to, to solve a problem. If you take, if you think it takes a hundred years to solve a problem, there's no incentive for you to do anything to solve that problem. And that in and of itself is a problem. And so just that mindset let me know that I cannot relocate and be among people who would see that there's a problem and either blame the government or who would say, oh, it'll be a hundred years before this problem is ever fixed. That told me that I'm better off staying home in America, my home <laughs> and traveling abroad to different parts of the world and the world is very big you know it's bigger than the united states it's definitely bigger than the african continent as well and the many beautiful african countries uh, that lie in it it is for these reasons that i feel that we black travelers Net network must deprioritize african travel uh and what does that actually look like for us Again, it mostly looks like the, the 
the trips that we have on deck to South Africa and Kenya, those are still live viable trips. So if you want to go to those countries, I'm telling you, this is the time for you to let us know you want to visit because, you know, we are taking these experience very soon off our table uh, and focusing more on other parts of the world. We've already removed Ghana uh, from the list uh, as uh, as a destination. And we're seeing like a lot of celebrities go to Ghana. Ghana is like really, really hot right now. But I can honestly say I've been going to Ghana since well before <laughs> the year of return, before it became hot and all of that. Um, so celebrities in America, black celebrities in America are always late to the real party. So they follow our lead in so many instances. But ladies and gentlemen, I am Jess. I am the founder of Black Travelers Network. And this is how I see us moving forward. And as you can see, we have some great destinations on our list of places to visit. And I just invite any of you and all of you to join us next time. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, like the broadcast if you enjoyed the conversation. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen.